Hi, this is Rich Coles from Productive Project Solutions. The purpose of this video is to show you how you can produce an S-curve for your project time plan and how you can do this just with a few additional columns. So what do I mean by project S-curve? So this is enables you and to show your stakeholders or to your project team of how the project progresses over time and when it's getting to a stage of completion. So in here, what you can see is what the baseline of the time plan. The project starts on the 3rd of October and it progresses through to, on the baseline plan, completion on the 26th of December. So that's the plan when it's running like that. And then what you can see is actually how the current plan is running, or rather the latest plan that is being agreed to, and then how it's actually tracking to plan um, on this stage here. So again, this is very useful if you want to see, well, this is what we originally set out to do. This is now the revised um, version that we've agreed to and how we're tracking. So how do I produce this? Well, this is done via a standard time plan. So this is the Gantt chart, which you can see. But what I've done is I've added in some additional columns here. Firstly, to be able to calculate the actual number of days that the project's running over, and then the percentage of each task that the number of days represents as an overall calculation of the duration of the project. So these are kind of some of the calculations I've got going on here. and all this feeds into a sheet, which ultimately is working out this, all those calculations relative to the dates on the project. And in that, I've also then got an archive sheet, which is taking the reference data for every week of the project. It takes a snapshot to see where are we on the actual plan against that piece. So let's go back and break this down a bit more. So in terms of for the calculation, what I need to understand is for each task, what relative percentage does that represent of the overall project um, on, on this piece here? So this way, I've got to understand that relative percentage. So let's just take a task which is of 15 days duration. Ultimately, I need to know what the total duration is of the project. So if I calculate these cells here and also add in these two here, if we look down the bottom, you can see that's a total of 67 days. So each task ultimately is looking, and I've got a calculation here, if I just go into this, and it is calculating and saying of this number here, what is that as a percentage of the total here? And what you have to be careful of is to exclude the top line totals which are which are come in as parents. So if you were to do this off the duration column, it's going to skew things. And so this is why also, again, 3W, 2W, I've created this into days in this um, formula here. So this enables me to work out that each task, what percentage does that represent of the overall task? And so when it all adds up together on that side. Now I've got baseline dates and I've got the actual dates here. So what I've done to do my calculations in terms of the um, calculation here is I'm looking at this piece and for the baseline, what I've created is I've got the dates going across the top, but so I can get the calculations in here. These are actually dates which are taken from a column across the side and I've turned them into values. So I've put in a plus and then two speech marks or, um, oops, speech marks or inverted commas um, on that side. So on this project, this is the start date of the project. And again, you can here use the summary sheet to input this and to say, what's the start date of the project? If I change that, it will change this date here. And so if I just come back out of the sheet summary, I enter that date and each one is again another seven days on, 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 on. So that rolls through for the duration of the project. So that I can then have my calculations below it. I then just have this cell is equals 1D. And so what you'll notice is I haven't named the columns, I've just rather given them numbers in this case. Because what it means is I can use this for another project and say my project was to be starting on, let's just say a completely different date here. What you'll see is if I change that to be the 24th of October now and press enter, then, oops, press enter. Then you can see the whole project plan has updated relative to that piece here. So, and if I scroll across, you can see all these dates have updated as well to enable me to pull my chart. So I'm gonna undo that piece and that goes back to how it should be. So why is this important? Because in order to get my the chart which I produce, so going back to this curve here, what I need to do is give 
some calculations. And so what I'm doing is I'm doing a sum if calculation. And what I'm asking it to do is to look at the time plan. Let's just look at the reference I've got here. So I'm going into my time plan on this case, and I'm saying, look at the percentage complete um, on this side. And so it's saying, well, what percentage should be complete? And what it's then doing is it's saying, sum that in bit information, so sum that range, when, in terms of the criterion range, it's saying, and if I just go back to the edit reference here, it's saying of the baseline date. And what it's asking it to do is to say, if that date is less than the date which is indicated up here. So D, 1D, so you can see if the sum of, if the date that it's due to be completed by is less than 1D, the 3rd of October, to there. So again, what it's doing is it looks at the time plan and says, is the date that it's due to be to complete less than the start date? If you scroll, scroll down these dates here, so the earliest date that something finishes is the 9th of October. So here we go. And if I go back to the calculation side, and I'll just go to the calculation, 9th of October, nothing's due to complete. But you can see on here, on the 10th of October, these items are due to complete on that side. So let's just go back into the time plan. So you can see a number of items are due to be complete on the 9th and the 10th. That is why the time plan is registering that information. So what it's doing is it's looking and it's saying, is are there any tasks that are finished before this date? And if so, what is the cumulative total of that piece? So each of these dates go through and then this runs off the baseline end date, whereas this one looks off the current plan end date here. So if I just go into this one here, just to give you a sif, standard time is looking at, again, the same percentage calculation. It's saying, what percentage does that represent? But then what it's doing instead of looking at the baseline is it's looking at the standard time plan and it's looking at the, if we go into the here, it's looking at the end date as opposed to the baseline date in this case. So this way then enables me to look at the plan and compare baseline to current plan. So that produces an overall chart. And if I come back to the overall chart here of, well, this was the baseline and this is the current plan. So you can just have those ones, but in reality, you wanna see how you're tracking to that progress. So how do you get that, the actual week by week view going in? In this case, what I've done is I've created an archive sheet. And in here, what it's doing is I have a, from the project time plan, I've created an automation in this case. And what I ask it to do is I'm copying the top row to the archive every Monday. So what that means is as it as it moves it into the archive, and here we go, every Monday at six o'clock when the level is level zero, so or level one, let's change it because I just made some changes. So when the level's one, it will copy this into the that sheet every week. And so that goes in and it will do it on a Monday. And when it does, it gives it a timestamp as it comes into the sheet. So if I go into the archive sheet, there's an automation in here, and as an item comes into it, it just gives it a timestamp. So these come in every Monday. As you can see, the dates are added because they're a Monday. And if we go to the calculation here, these are all Mondays as well. As it does, this comes in and the next date is fixed in. So as the next archive, the last one which came in said it was at 54%. So this was on Monday that's just gone. If we come into the plan here, that's why it's now tracking at 54%. So over the course of this week, as the team continue to update and progress on the project, and as, let's just have a look around and say things which haven't started. Well, this is now, let's just say, 50% um, complete. So as that's 50% complete, then what it will do is you can see the overall percentage of the project has gone up to 63% on that case. So as we progress forwards within the project, then we'll be able to see how we're progressing for, um, as the week unfolds. And therefore next week, the calculation, let me just go to the calculation here. So next week, the current plan is that we'll be at 61%. So actually we'll be overall ahead of schedule of the current plan, but behind on the original plan um, as was there. So that's kind of how you, you set this up. So in order to get your S curve, Again, appreciate, quite complicated, but 
Again, the result is quite powerful on this bit. So in summary, you're able to see what the baseline dates are with some calculations in here. And say, if you just go back to, this is the formula which I've got written in here, and this is referencing the certain references in terms of the percentage which I've created. And then you've got that for the baseline, the current plan, and then these, all they are is it's an index match off my other sheet, which is the archive sheet. And it says, find this date. When you find that date, tell me what the relative percentage is. And this is purely coming in on a weekly basis. So next week, that will come in with a 12th. It'll have the relative percentage there. And that means then calculation will populate here. And then the chart will be updated on that base. So they have it. Hopefully not too complicated hopefully it gives you inspiration in terms of that this can be achieved in terms of an S-curve within Smartsheet. Like so many other things, there's so much that is possible when you just try and work out how to achieve it within Smartsheet. And that's why I work with Smartsheet because of its amazing flexibility. So trust this has been useful. Clearly, if you've been watching this video, it's because you're interested in S-curves. So there we go. And there'll be more videos to follow on other items that you can achieve within Smartsheet. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.